This week I actually discovered probably one of my favorite new photography locations here in Sydney. And it's actually pretty close to where I live, which is really convenient. I went there the other day and shot some B-roll for another project that I'm working on, which you'll see shortly. But I thought this afternoon we'd head back over there, do a little bit of drone photography and talk about some of the ways that you can improve your drone photos. So without further ado, let's head to today's location. So this is actually the photography location that I was telling you about. And I know what you're thinking. It doesn't look like much. It just looks like a bunch of footpaths and grass, but you haven't seen it from above yet. And that's the most important thing when it comes to drone photography is what a location looks like from that classic bird's eye point of view. So my number one tip for drone photography would be to research the location that you're gonna be shooting before you actually go there. And the easiest way to do this is by either using Google Earth or Google Maps on your phone, switching it to satellite mode and having a look around to see what looks interesting from above because that's essentially gonna be the same perspective that you're gonna be shooting your drone photos from. This is just gonna give you a better idea of what things look like from above and you can actually pre-compose your photos before you actually even get to the location. So even though this location location behind me doesn't look like anything special. I looked it up on Google Maps before I got here and it's actually got this really cool winding footpath that leads up to the top there. I don't know if you can see that person on a bike there, but um, when you look at it on Google Maps, it's got this really cool spiral looking effect, which I think will make a really good drone photo, which is what I was talking about before composing your shot before you actually get to the location. So the aim of today's photo shoot, I guess, is just to send the drone up, see what it looks like, and hopefully we come away with some good shots. All right, so I've made my way all the way up to the top of that spiral footpath and it's a pretty nice view from up here. I think that this is gonna be a really good shot. And one of the reasons why I think this is gonna be a good shot is because it's really easy to compose. One of the biggest tips that I would have for drone photography is to focus on your composure and the framing of your shot. And one of the reasons that I chose to shoot this particular location is on Google Maps, had that nice spiraling effect towards a nice center point, which we can easily center and compose the image around that shape and that structure, which I think is gonna look really nice when we shoot it from above. So today I'm gonna to be shooting on the Mavic 2 Pro and I've also brought along some of my Polar Pro ND filters which will help diffuse any harsh light which we're currently experiencing. But once that light gets a little bit lower, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But that brings me on to my third tip for today which is the time of day in which you're shooting. So I tend to shoot my drone photos either early in the morning or in the last couple of hours of the day, closer towards sunset. We've got nice low lying light. It's not gonna overexpose or blow out your image and it's gonna give it some nice depth and contrast. I've chosen today to shoot closer towards sunset because it's freezing in Sydney at the moment and I really couldn't be bothered getting up early in the morning to shoot because it'd just be freezing and I'd probably be half asleep anyway. So we're shooting towards sunset today. We've got a little bit of time until the light goes down, but let's throw up the drone and see how it looks. got the drone in the sky and it looks pretty incredible. Another major tip when it comes to drone photography is to include a subject and because you're controlling the camera you can actually use yourself as a subject which is great because you don't need anyone else to shoot. So I think for this shot I'm gonna go lay in the middle of this circle here, shoot that top down like what we saw on Google Maps. Um, we've got some nice long shadows and what that's gonna do is it's gonna add a little bit more interest to your shot and it's also gonna provide you with more of a sense of a scale which is really important when you want to show up a massive sort of epic location like this one here. So I'm gonna go lay down over there and we're gonna see what it looks like. All 
right, that was a pretty successful shoot in my opinion, considering we found this spot of Google Maps. I think that um, we're gonna end up with some pretty sick shots. So let's go home and see how they turn out. I don't know about you, but I find green to probably be one of the hardest colors to edit. Jumping into Lightroom, this is the first image that I edited here. As you can see, I kind of went for a bit of a cooler, moodier tone, which I think is a more natural green color. If I show you the before here, you can see it's kind of really warm and it just looks dirty almost. So basically, if I come up here and I click on my radial filters, you can see that I've done a radial mask around this, that center subject there, which has kind of just darkened and brought our attention back towards the middle of our subject, which is like what I was talking about yesterday, composure and leading the viewer towards one sort of focal point in the image. That's also helped by the fact that I'm standing in the center there of the circle um, to give you a bit more of a sense of scale and kind of lead your eye towards the middle of that spiral pattern there. By going into this tab here, you can pretty much paint on exactly what color you want something to appear by using that and then adjust your exposure and your saturation and all the rest of it from there. So I made a few of those adjustments and I kind of made the grass a little bit warmer as it came to the top of the spiral where the sun was hitting just because I felt like that was natural and it added another layer of depth and I guess just interest to this shot. Another image I edited was this one here which is a much wider shot and if I go before and after again you can see there's a pretty major difference there. And it's mainly just the color of the greens, which is really hard to play around with. But I think shooting at this time of day was perfect because it really provided a lot more depth and a lot more contrast into this image as opposed to if I were to shoot this in the middle of the day. I feel like if you put this shot here side by side with what you see on Google Maps, you can kind of see what I'm talking about because on Google Maps, this could very well just be a flat, spiral path but in this shot here you can kind of see the elevation as the sun is hitting different levels of that spiral sort of walkway as it reaches towards the top with this image here to finish it off i'm thinking of posting this one on instagram so i'm just going to crop it here four by five uh, that looks quite nice i feel i feel like this especially because this was a wider image it crops in and I think looks just a lot neater when it's cropped here for Instagram. So I'm actually really happy with this. One final tip that I would probably say when shooting drone photography is to shoot your subject or landscape or whatever it is wider or further away than what you think you need to because I always find myself cropping in and it's always just good to have extra space on each side of your image so that you do have the option of cropping in afterwards. So one of the ways that I actually achieved this particular look is I dragged a radial mask over the whole image. It's got this color here. So this is like a, a nice green tone. And then what I did was I just went in with our erase brush and I just erased the spiral pathway going around the grass to just make that look a little bit more natural because that also was very green and then the whole thing looked a little bit washed out. So I just did that to give it a little bit more depth. And if you compare that to the previous image, you can see the parts a little bit darker there and I kind of wanted to bring it out and make that more of a focal point with this second edit here. So I really like how that turned out and I think that it adds a lot to this particular shot. So I'm pretty happy with this one. I might upload these two as like a carousel on Instagram and do a split slide on this one here, which I think will look sick. And yeah, all in all, a pretty successful shoot yesterday. I'm really happy with these shots, especially considering I didn't really have to travel too far to get them. So just to give you a brief summary of the tips that we went over again in today's video, number one would be to research your location before you go out and shoot. And using Google Maps is really helpful for doing this because you can actually see what a location looks like from that top down point of view. Number two would be to compose your shot with a main focal point or a main subject in the center of the frame. So in this case here, that spiral walkway is leading to the middle circle and it kind of leads the viewer's eye into that subject. And then tip number three would be to include a subject in there to kind of further provide a sense of scale and a sense of depth. Lastly, just be mindful of the time of day in which you're shooting, usually early in the morning 
or closer towards sunset in the evening is the best time for drone photography because the light is just better suited to drone photography. It's gonna provide you with a bit more depth and contrast and it's not gonna look flat and washed out. All right, so that pretty much wraps up today's shoot and little editing session. Hopefully you learned something and have now got something you can go out and apply with your own aerial photography. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you actually go and try any of these techniques or if you have used them in the past, let me know down in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. It helps me out a lot. Subscribe if you haven't done so and I'll see you in the next video.